Government and independent scientists have disagreed over the amount of oil that remains in the Gulf of Mexico. But there is agreement that an amount of more than 15 Exxon Valdez spills was released into the Gulf, along with nearly 2 million gallons of dispersant. In the case of the Exxon Valdez, oil was still found along the Prince William Sound coast 20 years after the leak. I think once the dispersant and the oil become more and more dilute, it'll be less of a problem. But one of the things I'm worried about in the future is that some of this is going to end up in substrates and we're going to have hurricanes. And years from now, when those things get redistributed out, you're going to have oil showing up for the next five or 10 years, just in places that won't be as large, but it's going to cause some problems in the future. Despite the fact that commercial fishing has been reopened in many areas within the BP impact zone, commercial fishermen remain skeptical about the amount of oil beneath the surface and the health of the estuaries they rely on. I think it was a bit premature. Some of the seafood testing that was done early on to open some of these areas, there was no consideration given to uh, testing for the chemicals and the dispersants. They used over two million gallons of dispersants. Concentrations of oil as low as one part per billion proved fatal to pink salmon eggs in the Prince William Sound estuary, which has many in the Gulf concerned about the fate of this year's spawning class of shrimp, fish, crab, and oysters. People are concerned about buying seafood products. I think that ecologically, we're gonna lose a whole cohort, a whole year class of organisms out there. So everyone's concerned about the near-term toxicity. I'm more concerned about populations three, four years from now when the larval fishes that were destroyed because of the oil spill won't show up and be adults four years from now, five years from now. And with the variability of an estuarine system like we're dealing with in southeast Louisiana, you can't just look a year later and say, oh, everything's okay or everything's been wiped out. And that's my biggest concern and the biggest parallel between us and Alaska. As efforts to combat the BP drilling disaster shift from emergency response to long-term recovery and restoration, the White House plan for Gulf Coast restoration becomes a critical vehicle to ensure communities are made whole and the Gulf is made sustainable. With miles and miles of boom now soaked in oil, the cleanup waste is a significant concern. I would like to go to the actual, to the dump sites. I would like to go to the landfills. Some kind of way, we, we need to make sure that every part of this thing is involved. And they're telling us at this point that these landfills can accept the solid waste with no problem and it's being disposed of correctly, but I don't know what that means in my terminology. So I got to see to believe well, that's the last step I think that we really need to follow through with the subject of that nature. I, I think the biggest thing is that what's going on is not being transparent to the public. The EPA has been tasked with managing the waste stream and ensuring the communities aren't left with a toxic legacy. Now, we still have concerns about the toxicity testing on the trash and what that means for our own landfills here on shore. There are concerns about where's the documentation, where it's going, how much, Where's the chain of evidence, if you will, or chain, you know, the manifest of where, what landfill it's going to and how they're taking care of it. As the Gulf Restoration Network monitors and responds to this crisis, they continue to need your help. Visit bpdrillingdisaster.org to take action, stay informed, and donate to their efforts. <laughs>